welcome to Professional Portal in this week's episode, Dress for Success. Today we will be discussing professional appearance, the expectancy violation theory, and later on we will bring out a special guest. Well, we're going to start our show with a demonstration of professor, professional dress in which, appropriate, in which is appropriate for which occasion. Let's bring out the models. We're now going to learn the do's and don'ts of, of business casual and business professional dress for women. We have our models here with us today, Eleni and Yesenia. As you can see, we have two models here. One is dressed correctly for business casual, and the other has some of the common mistakes that some women make when dressing for this type of business situation. We're going to start with Eleni here. She is wearing a pair of dress pants with a modest shoe. She's wearing a shirt that is in a color that is a solid, which is good for any type of business situation because prints can sometimes be distracting. You'll see that her shirt, although it comes down slightly lower, it does have a camisole under it in order to provide more coverage for a more modest look. We also see that her clothing isn't too tight or revealing, and this is always good for business because it's important to give the right impression. We'll also see that her pants are hemmed to a length that is accustomed to her, and this doesn't distract because of them being too long or too short. We now turn your attention over to Yesenia. As you can see, she has a very similar outfit on. We have a shirt that's accompanied with a belt. And accessories are definitely a plus in an outfit, but it's important for a business situation, especially for women, to make sure that they're not too loud or um, distracting for the eye. As we can see, she also has a shirt that is a bit low, but she's opted to not wear a camisole. This may seem a little inappropriate in a business situation, and so it's important to remember that your audience might not be as open as you are. We'll also notice that her pants are a little short, which is um, a little bit distracting because it may seem as though she doesn't quite have a look that's put together. And also, she is wearing a heel, but it just might be a little too high for a business situation. And although it is in a solid color, it's still the height that is a little bit distracting. And one thing for women, too, to remember is um, for nail colors, it's important to keep, you know, a more neutral tone because you don't want to distract the eye from what's more important, you. Thank you very much, ladies. We will now show you how men can dress for business casual situations. Our first set of male models are Josh and Alvin. Josh is dressed, dressed correctly for a, male, for a male dressing business casual while Alvin is showing some of the common mistakes that men make when dressing business casual. You will see that Josh is wearing a neatly pressed collared shirt with a pair of casual khakis and dress shoes and Alvin is wearing a collared shirt and jeans and tennis shoes. Jeans and tennis shoes are not appropriate for dressing casual. Thank you, gentlemen. Expectancy violation theory is especially important with business attire because it's important to keep your credibility strong. And expectancy violation theory plays a role here because wearing the wrong attire can create a violation in the person that you're meeting with, and this could be damaging to your reputation. According to, according to Burgoon, when our expectations are violated, we will respond in specific ways. If an act is unexpected and is assigned favorable interpretation, and it is evaluated positively, it will produce more favorable outcomes than it an expected act with the same interpretation and evaluation. Here is an example of the expectancy violations theory. It can be demonstrated when Chris goes for a job interview, he feels that he is not getting a very positive feedback from the potential employer. So he knows he should not violate expectancies and further hurt his chances of impressing the interviewer. However, if Chris suddenly felt more confident about the relationship he was building with the interviewer, he might consciously violate his or her expectancies. He could pick up a picture on his or her desk and comment positively on the picture, hoping that this act would make him positively stick out in the employer's mind later. 
Expectancy violation is especially important for women because of our clothing. It's important to have clothes that don't give away too much skin because this can cause a violation, especially if we're meeting with a male because we don't want to attract that kind of attention. It doesn't give off the right message. Also, as mentioned before, women should be careful with accessories because we don't want to cause too much attention or wear something that might just take away from our parents. Well, now we're going to show you how to dress business professionally for women. We're now going to bring our models back out, Eleni and Yesenia. As you can see again, Eleni is wearing some of the correct clothing for a business professional situation, whereas Yesenia is wearing some of the common mistakes that women make when dressing for business professional. As you can see, Eleni is wearing a slack again. It's also paired with a nice jacket. This is important for business professional situations because we want to give off the look that says that we're here to do our best and to be professional. As you can see, she has a shirt that does have a print. However, it's in a neutral color, so it's not distracting or what could be considered loud. We also see that she is wearing a heel. However, it's a modest heel. These are often referred to as kitten heels. And this is a very appropriate for a business situation because it gives you that little bit of height while still remaining professional. We also see that Elaine has added some accessories. However, they are again in a neutral color and they're not too loud or flashy, which can be distracting. Yesenia is again wearing some of the common mistakes that some women have. Although pencil skirts are very big right now in fashion for women, we see that it's just a little bit too high for what would be considered a business professional length. When you are a woman wearing a skirt or even a dress in a business professional situation, it's important to come either to the knee or just slightly above. We also see that Yesenia has added some accessories to her outfit too. Although very cute, not appropriate for a business professional situation. We see now that she has added a bit of a more modest heel. However, this skirt, if it were a little bit longer, might be a little bit more appropriate with tights. So it's important for women, especially when we are entering you know, the business world, that anytime we are revealing leg, it's important to have some type of tight or the added length to your type of clothing. Thank you very much, ladies. We will now show you how men can dress for business professional situations. John is again dressed correctly for a male dressing business for professional, while Alvin is again showing some of the common mistakes that men make when dressing business professional. You will see that John is wearing a button-up collared shirt with a suit and he's wearing dress shoes along with a necktie. You will, Alvin is also wearing a button-up collared shirt, however, it is not paired with the necktie. And he's also, he's, uh, although Alvin has opted to pair his collared shirt with a different kind of jacket, it's not a blazer which wouldn't be deemed appropriate for a business professional situation. Thank you very much, gentlemen. We'd now like to go over a little bit what kind of situations are most appropriate for these types of business scenarios. For example, if you were to enter a business casual type of event, this would be something that is more appropriate for such things as lunches or casual meetings with your boss or a client. And generally in those types of situations, you'll be aware of beforehand if it's a business type situation or if it's more of a business casual. Whereas with business professional, it's more ideal that you'll be meeting with um, a team or a group and that, are, that is our situations for business, professional, and casual. When we come back, we'll be joined by Terry Haney, one of our career services counselors. Now that we've learned how to dress the part, it's time to learn how it will land you the job. So stay tuned with us when we come back.
welcome back to Professional Portal. We're joined right now by Terry Haney, one of the career services counselors here at Aurora University in our Cross Center. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for asking me. So we just wanted to get your insight on some professional dressing, is that that's your area of expertise here at AEO? Yeah, it's one of the things I work with with our students and our alumni, yes. All right, Danielle, you wanna get us started? Yes, what is the first impression you hope to get from a professional? Oh, the first impression I hope to get is a nice smile and a firm handshake. And the first couple seconds when you're meeting with an individual, you form a, a, an impression. And if that is not a good impression, it's a very hard thing to overcome. So a good handshake, a nice smile, and a nice hello. That is very good to hear. We spent a bit of time on this semester, um, in this class in particular, learning how mm -hmm. to do a good handshake. So it's nice to know that that Fantastic. will come in handy. Um, what is the first thing you notice appearance-wise when you meet people? That's, that's hard to say. It can vary. Probably the first thing is something you mentioned earlier in the show. Whether a person is in context or not. Expectance? What did you call it? Expectancy violation theory. Expectancy violation theory. If I went to a basketball game and saw one of the players out on the court in a business suit, that would be an expectancy violation theory yeah. violation. Um, if I saw that same student come into my office wearing their basketball uniform, that would also be a problem. I hope to see someone in context for the situation and dressed appropriately for the situation. When making these opinions, what idea do you form about the person? Level of professionalism and their ability to relate um, to the situation at hand, mainly whether or not they are professional and know how to act in the situation. Um, what was your worst experience with a professional? That's, that's a hard one. I've been in human resources and in career services for a lot of years, so I've seen a lot of things. Um, things like a person responding out of context are probably more memorable than even than the dress violations. Someone who comes into an interview and starts talking badly about an employer or about a supervisor. Um, totally inappropriate dress would, of course, stand out as well. What tips or advice can you give to college graduates becoming professional? You did a good job in your show earlier, um, and the show What Not to Wear is probably a good one to refer to. I think you can probably find episodes of that online, and that's basically what you were doing tonight, showing what to wear and what not to wear. I am a fan of the show, so that is great to hear. <laughs> Um, are there differences that you've noticed in professionals in all fields? Yes, the dress code differs at different organizations. Um, if you were to go work at a bank, you probably would not have a pink or a green stripe in your hair. If you were at a media company, digital media or something like that, it might be absolutely appropriate and you'd probably fit right in. So you need to know your audience and dress appropriately. The um, type of clothing I wear here at the university probably wouldn't work if I worked at a downtown bank. Even though what I'm wearing is professional, it's a different type of professional than one we wear in that setting. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of people think about that. Yeah. yeah. How do you grow as a professional? Is there a difference from when you started and right now? Oh, oh yeah. As, as you grow over time, you learn different things, you see different things. As far as, um, as far as clothing choices, in my career, I'm still wearing similar things to when I started because I've always in, been in business, and actually I've always been in not-for-profit business, which is probably a little bit different, well, which is a little bit different than where I'm working at a bank downtown. Um, I'm still wearing suits. I'm still wearing jackets and slacks. Uh, there have been some jobs that I've had that required a little bit more professional suit and others, like here at the university, a jacket and slacks or a sweater and slacks is more is fine, more appropriate. What are some common mistakes that you notice recent college graduates or students make with professional dress? Probably trying to be too cutting edge and not realizing also that difference between the club look <laughs> and the business professional look. Um, watching skirt length and heel height, things that you mentioned earlier watching uh, fit 
and making sure that, that it is appropriate and that whatever you are wearing does fit you appropriately. Why is professional dress so important? It's part of your first impression and it is part of your overall um, impression in the workplace. If you are always coming in dressed less than professionally, you're not going to be respected as a professional. They're going to see you as someone who probably isn't quite up to snuff. Even if you know your stuff, you need to have, you need to be able to show it. You need to be presenting professionally. And uh, what is the most interesting wardrobe choice you've seen? Oh, there's been lots of them. <laughs> Recently, I think the most interesting choices I've seen were at a job fair that was uh, a job that fair that was held at a different campus and had participants from a lot of different schools in Illinois. There were two students that really stood out. One um, was a young woman who, uh, she was wearing this flounce short skirt with leggings that probably were appropriate for the gym because they didn't match the skirt at all. Her heels were at least six inches with oh, a platform and I can't even remember what her hair looked like, but it wasn't right either. Um, and there was uh, also a young man who didn't quite have it together. He was wearing a suit, but it was a very cutting edge designer suit, one of the very, I, I don't know the right term for it, I, I would call it a skinny suit. It looked about a size too small, and it was wrinkled. Oh, yeah. goodness. So I'm not sure if it was intentionally wrinkled or not, but it just didn't work for the job there. You know, you have to think about your setting, like you mentioned earlier. So, I'm not sure where they would have looked appropriate, but it was not for a job fair. Do you have any tips for how you could spice up an outfit while keeping it professional? A little bit of color. Um, for a woman wearing a scarf, wearing some appropriate jewelry, like you mentioned, um, wearing a pin, something like that, uh, helps spice it up. For a man, um, a dress shirt that is other than, than white, you can wear light colors. Uh, sometimes you can get away with darker colors too, it just depends on the setting. So, and a tie, ties are always good for a little bit of color. Do you have any other tips that you want to share with us before we say goodbye to you today? Uh, well, try to dress appropriately for the situation. If you're going on an interview, if you can go to the workplace beforehand, and just scope it out, see what people are wearing, and try to fit your dress in appropriately. You're always better off dressing a little bit more conservatively than, um, than cutting edge when you're going to an interview. All right, I think, I know I definitely got a lot out of this today, so thank you so much for coming. Okay, thank you for having me. All right, today we learned how business professional and business casual attire is used and when it's appropriate. Let's, that's right, Sarah. Let's not forget those tips college graduates need when becoming professional out in the workforce. We also learned today that attire is the first thing that people notice. I totally agree with you. So be careful with your expectancy violation theory because you may be sending a wrong message. We will see you next Thursday at 8, 7 central. Have a good night.